on. I'd love to know who's here. Um, so today we were going to be making the tote from that came with the um, the pattern that came with the Fabric Club um, for July. Okay, and it was just called the uh, I think Easy Pocket Tote or something. So it is a super easy tote to do. It's just it's boxed to the bottom. Um, Graham says, my husband said there's a website issue, but he's fixed it and we're all good. Samantha, yes, I know that you're here. Can you hear me? You're joking. Now you're messing with me. You're messing with me and I don't even know you're messing with me. It says we have a few more viewers on, but nobody has said anything in the chat. So, okay, here's the other thing, you guys. On YouTube, on the YouTube channel, if you want to start um, chatting and if you want to put comments in the chat box, you actually have to go straight to the YouTube link um, versus just watching it through the website. If you just watch it on my website, um, you can still like watch along and sew along with us. But, um, hi Ashley. But um, you won't be able to type into the chat box. So there is a link. So if you go to the website, if that's how you got there, there is a link on the website that takes you to the YouTube live stream. Okay, and that's where you can go and um, leave comments and whatnot. Okay, so the bag. Here it is, and I used, um, I did this bag the other day with actually another little sneak peek for what will be shipping in the August Club. So here's the one I did, and this was the tester. I hadn't made this before, okay? So there's the bag. And as you all know, we're doing um, the Haunted Mansion theme is going to be what's shipping in the July Club. Um, so this was this pocket here. It's the front pocket. It was one of, it includes some of the designs from the Haunted Mansion. There's the three hitchhiking ghosts, right? Um, the, the outside here that I used is just canvas, the blue. Okay. Um, the bottom was a Halloween fabric. I actually bought this from Chrissy last year. Um, it's glow in the dark Halloween fabric on the bottom. And then on the back side, I added, and this isn't actually with the pattern, but I thought it would be fun, so I did it. Um, I added a mesh pocket on the back side. Okay. Now, these straps are pretty versatile. It's pretty versatile what you can use. Um, this was a, it's like a holo, uh, no, reflective, reflective webbing. And you can see, it's pretty fun. It almost looks like spider webs. So that was pretty fun. Um, you can use um, just this, let's see, in the video, in the um, tutorial, my sister just used like nylon webbing like this. Um, you could sew your own straps and just cut like, what, like three and a half inch by whatever, uh, 48, I think each strap needed to be. Um, and if you cut your own out of, uh, uh, quilters cotton, you could just, you know, sew your own, enclose the seams and everything and sew your own straps if you didn't have this webbing. Um, this is kind of the easiest way to do it, I think. Um, so that was the bag I tried and I'll show you guys how to do this little mesh pocket it's super easy and then the inside was all enclosed with uh, French seams which sounds so difficult and hard but it's like I think French seams are easier than regular doing it the other way okay so it's all enclosed on the inside it has a box bottom which is really fun it's kind of just like a tote type book bag, right? It's pretty cute. Okay, so today, whoop, there it is. And then if I wanted to stand up, this is, I made this one, I decided I liked it so much that I was just gonna keep it for myself. So, this one, see it's pretty cute, huh? And it's big enough for like, if you're a teacher and you wanna carry like, you know, teachers have all the stuff they have to carry to school. And you have a pocket here for your phone. 
You can add a pocket on the inside if you wanted to. You could add a zipper on the top if you wanted to. But it's pretty basic, pretty easy. Um, you don't know how to do a French seam, Samantha? Holy cow. I know how to do something and you don't? I feel like so accomplished now. You know all the things. Okay, it's, it's like the easiest thing. I first did it on the tote I made for, we made the market tote in, when was that? The swap for like June, it was the June swap. Um, I learned how to do it on there. I learned it on an Oakley Roots tutorial and it's kind of just the same thing here. It's just super, it's super easy. We'll figure it out. Okay, so first what you need, let me put that back there, is all your pieces. Now I put all of the different um, size cuts that you need on the uh, Facebook group. Okay, we can kind of go over it now though. So you need, I've only been sewing bags since, what? Samantha, you are a quick learn if you've only been sewing bags since October, my goodness. Wow, that's pretty impressive, holy cow. Okay, so if you didn't see um, the post in the Facebook group, here's what you need, okay? So you need something for the outside of the bag. So maybe that's um, just cotton woven, it could be canvas. Um, I used canvas on this one. That blue is canvas. But uh, this, the, the other bag that I kind of have in process right now, okay, I decided to use just a cotton woven on the outside. Okay, now, um, canvas is a little bit thicker, right? And a little sturdier than cotton woven. So on this, I just interface the back with, um, it's the Pellin SF-101. Let me move the camera a little bit, okay? So I interface the back of these two panels for that. So that would be the outside, and these panels are um, 12 and a half by uh, 18, okay? So those are the two outside top panels. Then you have a bottom of the bag panel, and that is also 12 and a half by 18. And you're gonna see when we do it, we kind of just uh, end up sewing each of those panels together. So then you have like one long piece that's the outside of the bag, okay? So on this pumpkin bag that I'm in the middle of, I have this pretty new vinyl, okay, that I was gonna use. So this is 12 and a half high. 12 and a half up and down by 18 wide. Okay? That's going to be the bottom of my bag. I thought it might be the other one I did, I just used cotton woven on the bottom of this bag. Um, I thought it might be fun to see if it works with the vinyl. Okay, and then let's see, that's the outside of the bag. You need some um, for your pockets. Now, your pockets for this bag, you don't have to do the mesh pocket, okay? I just added that. If you just wanna do it super simple and just have one pocket on the front of the bag, that's perfect. That was my intention in the fabric club um, of these panels that I sent you guys, okay? So this pocket right here needs to be eight by nine, okay? It is uh, nine high by eight wide. So maybe I should say nine by eight, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> nine high by eight wide, okay? So if you are in the fabric club and you want to use this, or there was also the, uh, there was also this panel that I included, bringing sass back to class. I just trim these down even to an eight by nine, okay? Now, this is a pocket front, okay? This is the pocket back, okay? So you will end up sewing them like that together, okay? So you also will need an eight by nine for the inside of the pocket, all right? If you want to do, and you don't have to do this, but if you do, it's kind of fun. Um, I have started adding mesh pockets to a lot of stuff since I did the pixie um, crossbody tote, if you saw um, I posted that in the group a few times, but 
I got the pattern from Spencer Og. I got the tutorial from Jess at Oakley Roots. Um, and Jess added a added a cute little mesh pocket. I have some stray threads here to clip. She added a cute little mesh pocket to her um, pixie tote when she showed it on her tutorial. And so ever since then, I thought it was fun to add mesh pockets to everything because I have all this extra mesh. <laughs> so if you want to add a mesh pocket like this, um, what you're gonna need is an eight by nine cut again, because it's the same size as the front pocket, right? Um, eight by nine cut of the mesh. And you can get the mesh I use. It's just this Annie's. And it's off, off of, um, you can order on Amazon. It's like seven or eight bucks for a pack. They have tons of different colors. I've gotten it in pink. I've gotten it in different, like white, um, off-white, black, teal. They have it in a pretty blue. Um, they have it in all different colors. So it's kind of fun. It comes in a pack, uh, an 18 by 54 cut. So like a half yard basically. And um, it's like, I think it's like anywhere from six to eight bucks. Okay. But it'll be here in like two days max because it's Amazon. <laughs> okay. So if you did want to do that mesh pocket, you're going to need, of course, the eight by nine mesh. And then you need some of this fold over elastic. Now on this one, I used, it's kind of like just has a sparkle to it, right? And do you have that bin that had the fold over elastic in it? Okay. The pink one that was under here originally, where'd you put it? I was gonna show you what it looks like in case you don't know. Fold over elastic, I was using at the beginning of the mask craze um, for, uh, the I was using them for the um, the loops around the ears on the masks that I made, but here, I'll show you. And now I have a ton of extra, of course. And also I can use it. You can use it like for headbands, and I had a bunch of like I was into making like headbands and bows for my little one a while ago, and so I have a bunch of it left over, but. So this is fold over elastic. This is a red. You can put it back. I don't need it. Okay. And the cool thing about fold over elastic is there's like a line right down the middle. You can kind of see. So you can see exactly where the center point is, right? Okay. So fold over elastic is what we added to the mesh pocket. So you're going to need just about maybe 10 inches total, just so we have a little extra to work with on the top. Okay. And what else? Lastly, oh, of course we need the lining. Okay. So for the lining, you need a 18 by 34 inch piece. Okay. Which is pretty long. There's an 18 by 34 inch. Now, I did not have, I wanted to do uh, coffee beans on the inside of my pumpkin bag because I love pumpkin spice lattes. Okay, I did not have a 18 by 34 inch piece, so I just sewed it down the middle and made one, okay? So if you don't have a full piece like this, don't be afraid to just like seam it so that you do, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, can you take the dog? She's like pacing about. <laughs> my, <laughs> I have an old 15 and a half year old dog who wants to be by my side at all times, but she keeps tripping over cords out here. And so it, <laughs> it makes it a bit difficult. And go on, Aggie, go. Okay, one second, let me push her butt. Go, come on, come on, go. No, okay. Go this way. Go this way. Okay. Go. Grandma. Hey, Call her. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Okay. <laughs> nope. 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 Get a treat for her or something. She thinks she's in trouble. <laughs> oh my gosh. Never a dull moment. 
Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just seeing all your comments because I was um, away for a few minutes. Hey, Jewel. Okay, my sister is on. Sassy Sunflower Quilts. That's my sister, Julie. And she actually is the one that made the pattern for you guys. All right. Yes. I know. Ashley, Agatha is like... She's a hot mess. Can you out? <laughs> and now my Wanda is barking. It's chaos here all times, you guys. There's got to be an easier way, but I just. <laughs> okay. Can you close it? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. All right, so let's talk about what to do first. All right, you're going to take, and I'll just do it on the new one. What's wrong? Okay. First, you're gonna take the first step after you have all of these pieces cut out, you guys, is we're gonna do our pockets, okay? So we're gonna just sew them together. You're gonna take the front, and let's see if I can switch cameras here. I have tons of cameras that I don't know what to do with yet. No, it's not switching. Oh well. Let's see if it switches up here. Nope. All right, so we'll do what we can. Graham, if you're listening to this, the cameras aren't switching anymore. Okay, you're gonna take this and you're gonna sew one piece. The cameras aren't switching anymore. All right, you're gonna sew the front to the back, okay? so. What do you need me to do? So, right sides together, okay? Make sure that if it's a if it's a panel with um, you know, up and down writing on it, you want that to be on the top, right? Okay? So you're just going to sew right sides together. Okay? At, and we're using mostly quarter inch seams. We're using um, half inch seams if we're basting and we're top stitching. And then at the very end, when we do the French seams, we're gonna use half inch seams. Okay. So. All right, here we go. Oh, look, the cameras are working. Okay, so we're gonna just sew. You know why that went off? Why the, the stop working? I, th I think because it was on your other window. Okay, we'll just have to figure that out. Okay, after you sew this together, here's what you have. Camera one. Okay. Here's what you have. Okay, so you're just gonna take this. We're gonna press the seams to one side. Okay. Come over here to my. Make sure my iron's on. Okay, and I'm pressing my seams to the back, the lining of the fabric. And then. Then you're going to press it down like this, right? Samantha wants to know, do you mean an eight? Do I need a what? Do you mean an eight? An eight? An eight what? Half much for basted. Okay, hold on one sec. Let me look at the comments. Okay. Eighth. Eighth. So what did I say? Did I say a quarter inch for basting? I meant that we need, so we're going to mostly do a quarter inch uh, seams. For basting and top stitching, we'll do an eighth inch. And then at the very end, we'll do a half inch. Does that make sense? What did I say before? Okay, so there's what you have. Okay, after You've done this part, you're just gonna top stitch along the top of your pocket. 
And I'm going to change threads because I have an off-white in there right now. It's because I was working on the other bag too, beforehand. machine is working today. It's not being honorary. Okay, so top stitch just along the very top edge at about an eight in, eight eighths, one eighths inch. You said seam allowance quarter basting and top stitch half. Okay, yes, Samantha, I meant eighth inch. Thank you. Eighth inch top stitch. Yes, I'm glad you caught that because that would have been confusing. Okay. Oh. See, now it's not going to work for me. I think my machine needs to get serviced, you guys. There it goes. And I just cleaned it yesterday, or two days ago. And yet still, I think it just needs to go in for some TLC. Okay. It's a little wonky where I started, but... There's the pocket you just, or do you see the top stitch just along the top? Okay. If you want to do the mesh pocket, I'll show you quick how to do that. You are going to take your uh, mesh and you're going to just, can, can I have it? Okay. Yeah. Can I have the keyboard? Because you don't know what I want to change. As long as it's working, I'm good. Okay. You are going to, there's my husband. Camera. <laughs> He's, He's trying, trying to help me today. Okay, okay so, so you're, you're going to take, take the mesh and you're going, going to lay it down right on top of, let's see if I can show you with this. You're going to lay it down right on top of the back side of your fold over elastic. Okay? I'm using kind of a sparkly right now. So you're going to lay it down right there, just like a little bit, maybe halfway or a little bit less. Okay? And you're just going to use like wonder clips or sewing clips, whatever you have, to clip along here. And then we're going to baste this down. Okay? Let's do that real quick. Okay. okay, now, now when, when you base this down, down you, you want, want to, to um, use a zigzag, zigzag stitch, okay, because this is stretchy. Ooh, look at it, it's trying to get it. go wonky on me, okay? This is, um, the mesh is a little bit, it's not, you know, too stretchy, it's a little bit stretchy, okay? So if you want this pocket to like still stretch, right, you want to use a some, some sort, sort of a zigzag, zigzag stitch. stitch. It'll, It'll still work, it'll still be fine if you're gonna use a, um, if you don't have a zigzag, zigzag stitch, stitch on your machine. machine, but I like to try to use a zigzag stitch. Um, let's see if it works right now. Okay. So you're just going to use a zigzag stitch, base that down to your fold over elastic. if it doesn't get caught up. Sometimes I have to use like a leader fabric because it doesn't want to oh, it's gonna do it. I probably should have used a wider zigzag stitch on this you guys, but on the top I'll do it. It'll be fine for now. This is just basting it down, so it'll just be basting the inside. Do your wonder clips go flying when you guys sew? 
Uh, anybody else getting a weird echo when she switched cameras? Or maybe you should go listen from somewhere else. Okay. There's how I did it. Yep, oh, let's switch again. Okay. See, I just basted the very top down. Okay. All right. So after you do that, you can just cut. Trim the edges down. Okay. Now, obviously, you guys, I probably uh, wouldn't, and I'll actually probably redo this, but it was good that I did it this way so that you guys can see how, I, how it is. So next time I will obviously use a purple thread probably, right? I'll probably redo this one, okay? But it's good so that you can see how I basted it down and that it's a zigzag edge, okay? Now, after you're done with this basting it, you are going to take your Take the FOE, okay, and you're going to fold it over, okay, and you're going to have to wonder clip it together, okay. So fold it down over, like just basically in half, right? And then that gets sewn down too, because then that secures it all together. And you know what? I may actually not have to redo this whole thing. I'll just do purple right now. I'll just put purple in my machine. Okay, so you're gonna take your Wonder Clips. Whoop, you see? And fold it over like that. Are you guys still hearing an echo or am I all good now? Okay. All right, so. You're going to now sew again, okay, a zigzag stitch, and you're just gonna sew it all along the top, okay? It's like a little top stitch to this pocket, okay? So let me, I'm gonna get, so that I don't actually have to redo this, let's pick out some, ooh, maybe I'll do, I maybe I'll try some, some pretty thread. I don't know if that'll work. Okay. So I am going to take this and I'm just going to change out my thread real quick. If I can. Why is that not coming out? Because I have this little sticky down for my quarter inch seam. There it is. Alright. So, let's go to the Oh, no. There. Let's do this one. Okay, so I'm just going to switch out my thread. And then we will top stitch that FOE. Well, hopefully my machine is going to be okay with this thread, as I said. She's been very honorary lately. All kinds of issues. Oh, she took it. Hi, Caramba. Right? All right. So. Okay, now we are just going to do another zigzag, okay? And we're just gonna zigzag all along this top edge. Okay, I might try to come on. There it is. Okay. 
going to do a little bit of a wider stitch. We'll see how that works. You know what? I suppose that I shouldn't have, I maybe shouldn't have clipped the edges until I was done with the top stitch, but that's okay. Get over it. Okay, so we're just going to do and now I might have needed to do a so sometimes when I'm using especially stretchy fabric, I need to use kind of a leader fabric to get the stitch going before I start sewing. So I have <laughs> I have this scrap fabric that I just keep next to it, next to my machine, and I use it like if I need to check my stitches or something. It's just always there. So we're gonna see if that works. So we'll kind of just lead it in. Whoop. See, it already is wanting to be. And it could be too, like this. Uh, it could be the, the type of FOED I'm using. I'm using like a really sparkle. It might be giving us issues. It doesn't like it. Okay, let's see what it's going through. And it could be the sewing string too. Huh. No echo. Perfect. At least we're back on that. Right? Okay, let's see again. Where's my leader? Piece of fabric. Good. Sometimes it helps if I start a little further in on the fabric, on the when I'm sewing. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah. Okay. Now it's happier. You never know. Why is it that machines are so finicky, you guys? Okay, there we go. though why we basted it down first it would have been a disaster trying to do this all at once right sewing it over folding it over and sewing it down to this without basting it Oof, that would have been a nightmare okay so I'll trim it down and you know what the seam is going to enclose the little mess up at the beginning where it didn't want to take the the fabric through so it won't even matter. Okay, so there it is. Let me switch the camera one. Here it is. Okay, just stitch down on the top. That's all you need to do from the mesh pocket. Okay, besides sewing it down obviously to the panel. Okay, but that's it. You don't have to line it, nothing. Okay, so it's actually pretty simple once you get used to it, right? Okay, and kind of like a cute, cheap way to do a pocket and like fast way to do a pocket especially like exterior pockets you could do it on the interior too and then you can also if you wanted to you could um like on the bag you could sew down the middle and make um like two compartments right so if somebody wanted to like have pens on one side and then their phone on the other or something that would work too okay so after you have both of your pockets okay ready you are going to take them and you are going to i'm going to show you on this other bag that i'm kind of in the middle of doing okay you're going to take them and lay them down on your lay them down okay and line 
Hold on one sec, you guys. Let me take this one and show you because it's not done yet. You're going to take them down and put them, center them up with your, center them up with your uh, panel, or your, sorry, the front of your bag, okay? So see how this is centered? It's gonna be your um, pocket panel is going to be five inches from each side, okay? So let me grab mine. Oh, I was forgetting what is what. Okay, so my pocket, my front panels on the back to sa uh, bring in sass back to class bag are canvas and they are chevron. Okay, so what you're gonna do is take the first one, take your front pocket, which is bringing sass back to class, okay? And I wish I could show you this like from above, you guys. Is that better? Does that work? Okay, so you're going to take this and center it. Now, you take, okay, it's 18 inches across, okay? So if you go in five inches to here and five inches to here, your panel should line up perfectly in the middle. Okay, now um, I like to do a little extra because I am extra, no, <laughs> because I uh, am notorious for like things moving and whatnot while I'm sewing them. Um, so I actually uh, basted this pocket down, okay, just um, along the sides, along the bottom, and along the other side before the next step, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. Um, baste it down just at an eighth of an inch, okay? So just an eighth of an inch here, along the, side, along the bottom and up the other side. Do not sew along the top, otherwise you won't be able to get into your pocket, okay? And if you are doing the mesh version, with the, on the toe, you're going to do the same on that. So let's move this out. You are going to measure it up so it's at 18 again. Ooh, I cut it a little wonky over here. All right, but take your mesh pocket and five inches in, okay? Five inches in, and if it is looking um, a little bit wonky on the top, that's totally fine. It's just because the mesh is stretchy and the FOE is stretchy, it'll be fine, okay? It doesn't have to lay like perfectly flat. That's kind of the point of having mesh is that it stretches a little bit more, okay? But I also found it helpful to base this down, especially when you're having mesh, right? Because then you you make sure it stays put when we're doing the next um, part. And the next part is going to be um, putting these straps on, okay? All right, so let's do, go. Let's do camera three again. Okay, so I'm gonna go, and you know what? I'm gonna put a few just little regular pins at the top of the mesh, uh, the top of the mesh pocket, just to hold it like a little bit more in place when I'm stitching, because it is, I think that this actually, this sparkle FOE that I used is a little bit more um, stretchy than the other stuff. That's so fancy and fabulous, but it's gonna make me do a little bit more work too. Okay. I can't wait to make this bag later today. I'm sewing up the Naughty Convo hearts today in a sports bra. That's funny. You do not recommend the basting. Why don't you recommend the basting, Samantha? I think the basting is, is it helps me at least keep everything in one spot. Oh my gosh. Because I've... <laughs> I've done so many, had so many times where it like just kind of wiggles out 
of where you want it to be. Um, okay, I'm gonna and it should change out this thread one more time. Might be changing that thread a lot today. Um, my old dog is now just like sulking at the window, looking at me. Let me in, mom. Let me in. Good. So yesterday, I don't know what my machine's problem was. Yesterday and and Friday too, all day. The I have an automatic threader on my machine, and um, it just it wasn't working. And I have no idea why it wasn't working, but it was like you know like every I don't know like fifth time it would work. And it's supposed to be a really convenient and really easy function, but for some reason it didn't want to work with me yesterday. And now, knock on wood, it seems to be working okay. I don't know what the deal could have been with it. Uh, let's go back to a straight stitch. Nope. Wants to default back. There we are. Okay, I'm back. We're back in action. Okay, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to base down both of my pockets, right? So we have the front pocket and the back pocket. I'm going to actually set to do it. And just in an eighth inch seam, just along the very edge. All it is, all you're doing is holding it in place for the next step. your projects while you're doing them. I tend to do that. Sometimes I cuss at them. <laughs> okay, so here's our mesh pocket. This one is a little more bending than my other ones. I think that's just a function of this type of FOE that I used. It is an extra stretchy top. Okay, so there's our mesh pocket. Quickly, I'm gonna base down the front pocket in place. I wonder if it went echoey a few minutes ago, you guys, because of the machine? Maybe? I wonder if it was when the machine was going, if it gets echoey. We're going to attach the straps, and that's pretty easy. Okay. Okay. Now, 
Okay, we have two panels now. That's the front side. And this is going to be the back side of the bag. Cute, right? Yeah, I curse them often. Okay, so there's our bag. I'm just going to clip a few edges. Okay, okay. Now, what you're going to do is attach your straps, okay? Now, if you, in the tutorial, my sister um, mentioned that she used one and a half inch webbing for the straps, okay? I did not have one and a half inch webbing. All I had is one inch webbing, so I used one inch webbing, okay? You just, um, the only thing that's different is you scoot it in a little bit more on your bag, okay? Yeah, I didn't have the one and a half inch. So you can totally use one inch. It's totally fine, okay? Or like I said before, you can cut, um, you can do your straps out of fabric, right? You would just need to cut it, uh, what did we say the straps were? So the straps end up being about one and a half by 30, no, by 48, okay? So these that I have are one inch by 48, okay? If you wanted, you could do wider straps than that. You could do two inch straps if you wanted to do, okay? You just need to adjust how you push it in on um, when you line it up on the fabric and sew it down. Um, if you wanted, you could cut what, I suppose three inch by 48 and then fold it over, sew it down and fold it over, okay? So that you don't have any raw edges. Uh, you could do your straps that way. It's pretty much up to you, whatever you have, right? So on my sister's tutorial, she mentioned that if you wanted to add a little extra fun to your straps, you could use ribbon and sew it down the middle, okay? Or you could use something like this. Uh, I have like a mini rickrack. That's pretty cute. Okay, so if you wanted to do this, that's fine. Okay, it would look, okay. What do you guys think of that? I think it's kind of fun because of the chevron bag, right? So we have the chevron, let's see if it works, yep the chevron bag and then the rickrack would be going whoop down the center of it okay so if you want to do that all you're going to do is line your rickrack up add some or ribbon works too if you have like half inch cute ribbon i did i looked for that but i did not have half inch um all i had that would match was like one inch which is the same width, which I guess would have worked too. I would have just had to have been kind of careful. <laughs> That's such a cute idea. Um, it's cute, especially, I might give this bag like to my, to my little Maisie one, my little girl. She might think this is really fun. Um, or heck, I might just keep it for myself because it is fun, right? So if you're gonna do this, um, Rick Rack gets to be Sometimes it um, doesn't want to stay put when I'm holding it there with my hand. And I've learned while I'm stitching it down, and I have learned that from lots of times with it moving, see it's even wanting to move a little bit now and it's being held down by Wonder Clips. Um, so I'm gonna just stick it down. I mean, I'm gonna not stick it, I'm gonna clip it down pretty good, I think so that when I sew over it, it stays mostly put, right? Because there's nothing worse than sewing almost all of it down and then realizing that you're gonna have to use your seam ripper and do it again. Drives me crazy. Okay, I maybe should have even added more than that. Maybe I'll just add a few more at the middle. Probably should have done this beforehand, huh? Um, on the first bag I did, I didn't bother with this because the what I used was already kind of fancy. 
Um, on my first bag, I used this, which I just got off Amazon. Okay, um, it's reflective, and it was already kind of fancy in the middle, so I didn't have to bother with anything fun. And you don't, certainly don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to go a little bit extra on stuff. Sometimes it gets me into trouble. Okay, so there's one. Now you're just gonna take this. Oh, keep forgetting what camera I'm on. You're gonna just take this and sew it straight down the middle. Okay? And I'll have to whoops. I'll have to do the same to our other. And this webbing's nice because it doesn't really have, there's no wrong side and no right side, right? So it doesn't really matter. It's kind of nice when stuff doesn't have a right and a wrong side. That's why I like batik so much, I think. Because <laughs> most of the time with batik fabrics, it's dyed through. And so m most often, I think it looks the same or super, super close on both sides of the fabric, the right and the wrong side, which I think is fun. So like when I was making masks, I used, um, I used batik fabric the most because I thought it was the most breathable. And uh, it was nice because when I was just like grabbing and you know, when we were sewing like 50 masks a day a year ago, ugh. Um, it was nice that we could just like, I could just grab a piece and not really worry about like, you know, I could just grab it and go. You don't have to really think about it. All right. Okay, so we are going to sew this down and then I'll show you how we're gonna attach the straps. It's super easy and then after the bag comes together pretty darn quick after we attach the straps. Um, it's just going to basically be sewing it all together and sewing the, sewing the three panels together, the front, the bottom, and the back. And then um, adding the lining and doing the French seam. It's pretty quick. Okay, ugh, you guys, I have to change out the thread again. Okay, I'm gonna need some pink thread. All right, let's sew this real quick. Let's see if Katie can do a straight stitch the whole time. Hmm. I'm gonna use the, oh, see, it did not like it. You see how it didn't thread that time? I don't know why on earth it's doing this to me. Nope. Doesn't like it. I thought we were going on a streak machine. Come on. Okay, crush fingers. Oh, it did it. <coughs> I don't know why it's being so weird. I think I just need to take it and suck it up. Pay the hundred bucks to get it serviced. It's gonna drive me crazy. Hmm? Oh, there. My husband just told me I needed to switch to camera too. Okay. Rick wrap down. Let's make sure the stitch is working first. There we go. Okay, let's get this rick wrap down. down the middle of the rickraft as best you can, you guys. 
<laughs> sometimes I go too fast and then I get all off. And you don't really have a ton of room for error on this stuff. Come on. Come on, Shane. Here we go. So I'm thinking, you guys, that I'll post this in the group too. Oh, look at see the rickrack's even getting a little bit stretching a little bit, right? So I'm going to end up with a little extra, which is fine. But it's interesting that it's as I sew it. Do you see right there where it's like stretching a little bit? Huh. did get myself in trouble. Arr. So I think the best thing to do if you get kind of off center on your rickrack is to just cut and start again. Because if you pull it to get back center, it's never going to be right. Yeah, look at all that rickrack I have left over. I have a good inch to inch and a half. It's interesting that it stretched like that. Here's the first one. And uh, let's go back to camera one. All right, here's the first one. Cute, right? I mean, it's mostly centered. But look at it. It stretched as I went. So I have about mm, a little over an inch extra on the end that I had to clip off. Okay, let's do the second rick rack. I'll do this one a little bit faster. I'm gonna switch off to camera. You guys want to be watching, or do you want to be? Let's do camera three. Okay. Now let's see. I use a fabric glue stick. Oh, Julie, use. You should send a link to me for the webbing for Amazon. Okay. That's a good idea, you guys. Glue fabric glue. Do you guys have any fabric glue that you like to get? I mean, I have the three-in-one craft glue, the beacon three-in-one, would that work? Or is it actual like fabric glue stick? The one I have is just like a drip glue. And I haven't actually used it on anything yet. I mean, part of it is just because I'm lazy. A lot of times I don't, don't want to clip it because I'm clip it in the center because I'm like, eh, I can line it up by eye. That's yeah, and then at the end, I'm pissed at myself that I didn't take the time, right? I like to try to do it too fast. I don't need to clip it. It'll be fine. That's why I started basting stuff down, too, because I'm kind of lazy about clipping. It's kind of just easier. I never, I feel like I never use enough clips or pins to keep something down in the correct place. Oh, this one's giving me extra too. Hmm. Now, 
know if you wanted to I think on my sister's tutorial this was like one of the very first steps right I think it was a step right after the pocket if you wanted to do like a bunch of these in one day what I would do if you were like okay I need to make these for teacher gifts at the beginning of the year so I'm gonna do like five different bags I would cut them all cut all the pieces one day and do all of the like extra little like things like if you want to do the mesh bag or the mesh pocket do the mesh pocket you know and like get it all ready to sew down to the panel um, if you wanted to add something extra to the to the strap um, like I'm doing right now you could totally do that beforehand so that everything is just like ready to go and pieced together I found that easier that's how I did my when I did the pixie totes I did like four of them at one time um, the Spencer Og pixie tote and I just like prepped all of them cut all of the pieces out and like clipped all of the pieces together in the correct order with like the pattern um, numbers or letters you know like pattern piece A pattern piece B I clipped it all together so that they were like just ready to go um, one after another and then the next day I was just able to like sew all of them together and it came together real fast right okay so here's our other bag strap cute cute okay so now we're going to take the bag straps and I'm going to show you how to um, place them okay so what you want to do on the tutorial let's see for the one and a half inch if you have a one and a half inch size um, ba -ba 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 -ba, you are going to mark it four inches in I believe uh, four inches in from the side okay on if we have only a one inch strap you're going to mark it, I believe we said four and a half inches, but let me look how this works. So let me show you how I did it on the one that's on the bag that's kind of already in process. So on this one, we marked it at, that's 18 inches across. Okay. I'm going to move it like this so you can see. Okay. So, our pocket was already basted down, okay? I took the bag strap and I marked in one, two, three, four and a half, okay? And that gives us about a half inch over the pocket and then a half inch to the right of the pocket, okay? So on this side too, it was about four and a half in, okay? And then you are just going to clip those in place. So I used Wonder Clips on the bottom. I kind of lined it up, made sure it was all even all the way up to the top. And then you just want to make sure that the top is also four and a half inches in so that you know it's like straight, right? Okay, and the same over here. And then I clipped it up here. Okay. Okay, and then I had to use a few pins in the middle just because I wanted to make sure that it was like flat. Okay, it wasn't all bubbled. Um, when you do this, so you take your strap, do one side first, then come up, make sure that the strap lies correctly so it's not like twisted up here, right? It lies correctly and it's gonna be flat coming down this way. Okay, and you're going to do the same exact thing to your mesh pocket, right? Same idea. I'm going to take it. It's already basted down, so you got that done. Take this four inches in, four inches in. Okay, so after you do that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to do that real quick on ours, on the one that I'm, whoa, what happened to my phone? I didn't want to, it's all cattywampus. All right. I'm going to clip the, I'm going to do this to the chevron bag real quick, and then I'll show you how 
Um, there's another important step to do before we sew these straps down. Okay, so do this first, clip down. So I'm gonna get some wonder clips ready. So we're gonna go four in to here. Oh gosh, it looks really cute, you guys, with the chevron. I mean, with the, sorry, with the rickrack and the chevron. Okay, make sure it's lined up to the top. Yep. Okay, and then I use two wonder clips at the top just to get it on both sides. Like that. Okay, now take the top of the strap and just like make sure it's going to all go in the right way so that when it's on your shoulder, it's not all wonky and twisted. Who's done that before on bags? I have done that many a time. It's so sad when you get to the end of your bag and you're like, oh, the strap is completely twist, twisted around when I hold it. That's annoying. And there's not really any way to fix it because the bag is done. Okay. There. Okay. Now I'm going to take just a few pins and help it out here to keep it in place. Stay where you are. This is so cute, this bag. <laughs> I love like the wildness of it. It's very cute. Okay. Pin it over here. And guess what? I'm gonna have to change thread yet again. I like my thread to match. Okay, so here's the first one, all clips down. Okay, cute, huh? I'm glad we did the um, Rick Rack, the pink Rick Rack. Yeah, see, so, oh, okay. Elmer's glue stick. Samantha just uses an Elmer's glue stick. Julie uses fabric glue stick. And then Julie said that liquid fabric glue works but then you have to wait for it to dry and I'm not very patient yeah I might have to get Julie will you post into the comments like on Amazon is there like an Amazon link for the fabric glue stick okay and then I'm gonna do this the same exact thing you guys for the mesh bag I'm gonna get the strap You know what would be, be really cute, cute is um, if, if you, you wanted, wanted to, to, if you have like school age kids, kids right? right? And, and you, you wanted, wanted to do, especially in elementary school. school. I know when, when I was teaching, teaching we always were looking for book donations to the classroom, classroom library. Because even, even though you like go to the library as, um, as a, uh, even though you go to the library usually, you know, as a, one of the things that you, you know, do during the week in school, you go once a week to the library, at least we always did um, when I was teaching third grade. It's still nice to have books in the classroom, like a classroom library, right? So that the kids can just go and check out books from the classroom library when they need to. And anyway, so, but we were always lacking in enough books and especially enough like, like of the new cool books, right? That kids are into. Um, because there's all different levels of readers, right? And kids are into all different kinds of stuff. So anyway, and they don't want the classic books anymore, unfortunately. Um, so this would be a really great gift. And maybe I'll do this for my kids. My kids go to a, a Spanish immersion school, so they need Spanish books in their classrooms. But how fun would it be if you made, um, you could, <laughs> probably not fall is my second favorite F word for the teachers. Maybe for a high school teacher, I don't know. <laughs> but um, but bringing sass back to class, it would be a really cute tote to give to your teacher. And then, and you could fill it even with some books for the classroom. How cute would that be? They would love that. And so much better than just like, I don't know, a plant 
or something, right? The books they can like really use. Okay, so here's the other one pinned down. Okay, did I do it correctly? Yep, okay, so may, and again, when you're pinning it, make sure that this isn't twisted and that it's gonna lie correctly when it's on your shoulder, right? Okay, so here is the important thing that we need to do before we start sewing. Okay, I'm gonna switch to this, this camera, camera so, so you can, can see. see. You, you guys, guys want, want to measure, measure two, two and a half, half inches, inches down. down. Okay, and put a little mark on your strap. Okay, so I have like a little ruler here. I'm in, and I'll show you this in a second. Let me just do one, okay? You're gonna go from the top of your bag and you're gonna measure two and a half inches from the top of your bag. Let's see if I can use a pen that you guys, you all see. Okay, so, and just do a little, like I'm using one of those, um, what are they, Frixion? Is that how you say it? Frixion, Frixion? Okay, two and a half. And Did I do this one correctly? Am I not measuring correctly? No, yeah, pretty much. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So you're gonna take this, take your ruler, okay, and you're gonna measure here's the two and a half inches down. Okay, and just mark a little line right there. Okay? Same here on this side. Marked it with a little line. Okay, and that's, I, I used, uh, the Frixion pen is, um, it erases with heat. So, you won't see this line. Okay? So what you're gonna do after you do that, okay, we're gonna take it to the machine, and we are going to sew down the straps, okay? You're gonna sew all the way up here, stop where you made the line, go across, and all the way back down, okay? Do not sew all the way to the top, that's very important, okay? So you're gonna go up one side, across where you made the line, and back down the other side, okay? And you're gonna do that on both of the, both the front and the back panels. Echo is back. What if I switch? What if we go to camera three? Is that better? I don't know why it's echoing. Maybe it's just my room. Um, okay, let me measure. I measured one of these bags. Let me measure the other real quick. So I'm gonna do two and a half inches down on this other side, other bag, the, the uh, front of the bag. You're just gonna do a straight line across when we get to that two and two and a half inch mark. Nope. My pin is in the way of where the two and a half inch mark is. Okay. There we go. Okay. So go, let's change out to where did my white thread go? I wonder. Did I put it back? Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. I don't think we're going to need pink hands. So we can. I got these little things on Amazon, the little sticky things. Let me see. They were um, to stick down, like on the seam allowance, you know. I had a sticker underneath, actually, it was on top of my machine, that showed me all the seam allowances. But then I cleaned my machine and the sticker got all gunked up, so I had to move it. Anyway, I may put it back on, but I think I'm, I'll put it on the underneath side. Because I am terrible at keeping my seams straight, and I need all the help I can get. Okay, let's take the white. Reset 
Julie, if you're watching, do you see the issue that I'm having? The echo is on the phone camera. How weird. So the echo isn't right now. It's just on the phone. Strange. Hey, Julie, if you're watching, do you see? Julie and I have the same machine. That's why I'm asking her. Do you see the issue that I'm having? Like every third time, it does the automatic, the automatic threader will work. But I have to like, it, there's some, there's something up, I swear. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go up one side, just with a straight stitch, just along the outside, probably like eighth of an inch in. I didn't move it, it would have like probably broken my needle or something. My stitch would have been all wonky. Okay, go right to that line that we marked. Okay, and now I'm going to go across. In. There we go. And now just across to the other side, and then we're going to go down. Easy, right? It's going to be so cute. Okay. Go, and back down the other side. see in the picture but I have a stitch coming right across here I did not go all the way up okay it's right across there all right let's do the other side I like to stitch the inside first right next to the panel because that's what it'll so it'll hold the panel down and the webbing down okay Although I guess if you have basted it, it shouldn't really matter. change threads the same colors that I'm sewing on the right because <laughs> then you don't see the mistakes. Okay, so there's one. Let's switch to camera run real quick to show you. Okay, I'm still leaving these top clips there because this isn't completely sewn down and it just kind of helps it, you know, stay where it is. But there's the front panel. Cute, right? It's really cute. I like the chevron. Um, I haven't used the chevron, the canvas chevron yet. I like it. Okay, let's sew this other one down with the rick rack. And then I'm going to start putting this baby together. Let's take the pin out before we get there this time. What? This is driving me crazy. This little sticky thing is coming up. It's probably because I've changed my bobbin out so many times. But it is not doing its job right now. Okay. Again, that's 
Okay, just back it out. All right, across and down. And here we are. All right, let's go. side to do. Further than the line that time, it's not the end of the world. It is okay. This is such a cute way to attach a handle to a bag, too. It's so easy. So easy. Okay. Here we are. Okay, there's the back. It's cute, right? Okay, now we are going to take the back, or sorry, take the front panel and get our bottom panel. Okay, so. Let me make sure, yep, okay. So here's what I am using for this bottom panel. It's the one that says bringing sass back to class, okay? Um, that is a directional print, okay? Which makes it kind of hard, right? So if you cut it all out in one piece, then one side would be right side up and the other side would be upside down, right? So what I did is I, Instead of cutting one piece out, and Julie, you'll have to confirm the sizes um, on what we did. I forgot what sizes we did for this, but one, I cut it, it's basically two pieces, right? So it's 12 and a half by 18, it's two pieces. This was one piece, and this was the other piece, okay? And I sewed them together, right sides together, bottom to bottom. Okay, so you can see there's a seam in the middle. Okay, and so you can see here. Uh, see, sass and sass. Okay, so it's bottom of the word to bottom of the word. Okay, so that way, when you attach it to the bag, the bottom of it's gonna be like this. So it will be right side up on both sides. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you're gonna use directional fabric, it's just like a little extra step that you have to do. All right, so what you're going to do is attach this, uh, the bottom of the bag to the front panel of the bag. Okay, so to do that, you're just going to line it up and we're going to camera again, you guys, so it might be a little echoey. We'll, we'll try, try to do, do this, this part fast, fast. okay? Right. So, so you're, you're just, just gonna, gonna line, line it up, up. okay? Right, right sides, sides together. Two pieces, okay, okay. So, so if you, you have directional fabric, fabric, Julie, just put it in the comments. You do two pieces and cut them at six and a half by 18, okay? And then sew the bottoms together. Okay, so take your panel, your bottom panel, right sides together with the front panel. We're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam right here, okay? Easy peasy. Just a quarter inch seam along here, okay? So I'm gonna clip it in place first and then get sewing. Um, and we'll go back to our 
camera that doesn't echo us. It's not echoing anymore, is it? Okay, let me clip this in place. So, put it in place. There's a dog that's like losing his mind outside. I hope that's not our dog. I think it sounds like it's a bigger dog than Wanda. Wanda is, I think you all know that Wanda's our new puppy that we got over Mother's Day weekend. She's a hot mess. She's a Labrador, half lab, half border collie. But she's a barker. And she just barks. I swear like she's seeing ghosts or something. Like there's nothing in the yard and she'll just bark. We don't know what we're gonna do about that. <laughs> I'm sure it's driving the neighbors crazy. Okay, I'm gonna sew this down in the quarter inch seam. Oh, and you know what? Also, you guys, you don't have to do this. I didn't do it on the first bag I made. Um, on this bag, just to see if there, it would be um, some extra structure, I added um, SF-101 interfacing to the back of the bottom panel piece, okay? I did not do it to the, other, to the, to the front and the back pieces because it's already on canvas. So canvas is a bit thicker. But I wanted to see if this would help with the structure, um, like the, the boxy structure at the bottom, right? Because we're gonna be end up, we're gonna end up boxy um, boxing this bag at the bottom. So here we go. Okay, so there's the top of the bag. We have sewn down to the bottom. Okay, cute, right? Okay, now we're gonna take it and we're gonna attach the back panel to the bottom of the bag, okay? And that's going to give us just one really long panel that will be the same size as the lining that we cut earlier. All right, so I'm going to go to the phone camera again. So it might get, oh, you know what we're going to do first, you guys? We need to press this, obviously. We need to press this seam down. So I'm going to do that real quick. Press this, and you know what, too? I think we need to top stitch it, huh? I'm just forgetting that spot. Okay. I guess you could top stitch after the next one, but I'm going to do it right now. My iron went to sleep on me, everyone. One second. Okay, when you press this, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive. When you're pressing this down, you're gonna press it towards the bottom panel, the bottom bag panel. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it and just press down on the top. And then we're gonna sew a nice little top stitch. If you forget to do this, this isn't the end of the world either, but it's kind of nice. It, it's like a, it, it makes the bag in the long run just look more finished, right? I am not going to change threads. We're just going to use white. How about that? Okay. All right. Let's just top stitch along here. I'm glad I didn't 
going to do this. Oh. And you top stitch just at an eighth of an inch. It's a little tiny stitch. A little extra to kind of like hold it in place. Be careful when you go up and over the straps, depending on how thick your straps are and if you have like extra stuff like rickrack. You just kind of need to guide it a little bit more so it doesn't, the stitch doesn't get all wonky when it's trying to push over that material. Okay, here we go. So I just added, we pressed it towards the bottom, and then I added a little top stitch along the top. Okay, so now I'm switching to the phone camera. So if it gets a little echoey, I apologize. Okay, you're going to take your bag and flip it so the bottom is facing you, okay? And then you're gonna take your other the back of the bag panel with the mesh pocket, okay? And you're going to lay that down so they are right sides together, okay? Bottom to bottom and then line up the bottom, okay? And I'm going to clip along here, okay? And then we're gonna sew it at a quarter inch seam to attach it, okay? So it looks like that, okay? So, clip that in place. You know what, I'll switch you guys back to the other one so that you don't have to have the echo. I don't know why my phone, it's apparently the echo is only happening when I switch to the phone on my camera. I'm not sure it's something we'll have to look into. I don't know why that's happening. Okay, so I've clipped that all. Okay, I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch seam along there and then we're gonna end up with one large panel, okay? Essentially the entire outside of our tote. All right, here we go. These Wonder Clips, they are amazing. And I don't even think I have the actual Wonder Clips. I just called them Wonder Clips because that was the brand name, that, you know, the brand. I don't know if they were the first ones that came up with them, but they're certainly the most well known. But if you don't have these clips yet, oh my gosh, they are a lifesaver with sewing. So much better than using pins. Ugh. And especially when you're attaching like when you guys are working with vinyl and whatnot, sometimes you don't want to use pins on vinyl, right? Because like it doesn't have as much, um, it doesn't come back, uh, it doesn't, what do you call that, give? No, not give. It doesn't come back together. Like you'll be able to see the pins <coughs> through the vinyl, right? So the Wonder Clips are nice to use when you're working with like that kind of material and thicker material. All right, so here we go. I have one large panel. Okay, now again, we need to press the seam towards the uh, bottom of the bag and then top stitch one more time. Yeah, but the Wonder Clips, you can just type in, um, you can type in sewing clips on Amazon and you can, they're the same, basically the same thing as Wonder Clips. I don't, I don't see any difference. Um, but they're amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna press this.
just a top stitch. Okay, about an eighth inch just along the top um, right here. Okay. Kind of like secures it a little bit more in place, but it also gives it more of a finished look. big panel. This is the outside of your bag, okay? Um, when your bag is done, okay, it'll be like that. It's cute, right? It's really cute. I like it. What's my phone on? What do you mean, what's my phone on? I think we put it on like airplane mode so I couldn't get any phone calls right now. Hold on, I need a water break for a sec. Oh. Uh, okay. All right, let me move this project. We have our, my other, the pumpkin bag is over there now. Clips back up here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is So it, oh wait, no, I almost forgot. Julia, you would have been mad at me. So now we're going to actually take, we're not doing the inside yet. We have one more thing to do so that it can be really cool. Okay, we're gonna take the entire bag and we are going to lay it out face down. <laughs> you can see all my awkward stitches here. Oh, how funny is that? <laughs> okay, so you can undo your clips at the top if you have them still in there. Okay, what we need to do is we need to take the top of our bag Okay, so here's the straps. This is why we didn't sew the straps all the way down, okay? Because of this step, okay? So we're going to take the top of the bag and we are going to kind of make like a cuff, right? We're gonna fold it down a half inch, press, and then fold it down another half inch and press, okay? Um, you can use Wonder Clips to hold it there, especially if you're using like vinyl or um, canvas because it doesn't like to stay as much as Quilter's Cotton, okay? Um, so I'm going to take, I should have brought my thing over here so you could have seen. That's what, we can do that. Let me see. I'm going to just move the iron real quick and then you guys can see how I'm going to do it instead of having the iron way over there. Let's just move it and make it easier. Okay, so, hold on one second, guys. She's got two irons going on. Okay, so we can put the iron in there. All right, so. And it can be, I mean, I did, I, I, I didn't actually measure the half inch when I did it the other day, I was kind of like, of doing my guesswork on it all right Iron's back on let's switch it i'm going to switch it to the phone again so, so you guys can see okay so we have our bag face down right okay you're going to take this no it's just physically on the um it's the phone's on the table samantha just like 
It's exactly the same spot as my computer. That's what's weird. I don't know if it's just catching a weird echo in this room. Okay, so you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it. Let's start over here so you can see better. Half inch, like this, okay? And then, maybe because it's so close to the computer and the computer's the main source, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try not to burn your fingers when you do it. Huh. I do that often. Okay, and if you want, take some wonder clips. And just secure it. Help it out, help yourself out. The only thing about canvas, ooh, and be careful of your, um, depending on what you're using with the straps here, you don't wanna like iron directly on. Cause if you do, I think it's fine if you're ironing, ironing like through the canvas and it touches it. But I'm kind of thinking that these nylon straps might not help look so well to it iron directly on it, right? Especially a very hot iron with steam. All right, so we're doing this. One more. The thing about canvas is it doesn't really, like, it doesn't hold the crease. Like, you can iron it, but it doesn't, you know, it's not like Coulter's cotton where the crease is just going to hold after you iron over it once. You definitely need something additional. Okay, so we have it folded over once. Okay, we're going to fold it over one more time. Okay, so now since that, you kind of already have it held with Wonder Clips, you can kind of just like fold it over again and then re-secure them right fold it over reattach the wonder clips fancy graham oh graham graham did you order me a snowball <laughs> My husband just typed in the chat that he just ordered me a new mic so that I wouldn't have the awkward echo. Okay, so after you guys do one side, you're gonna do the same thing to the other side, okay? So I'm gonna take it off the screen because the screen's giving you guys an echo. I'm just gonna go to the regular camera and I'll just talk to you while I'm doing this since I just showed you a minute ago. I'm just gonna fold down again, half inch, press. Woo! I kinda wanna try this bag with, um, I wonder if all vinyl would work. Not all vinyl, sorry, not the inside wouldn't be vinyl, obviously. But I wonder if you could do a tote with, I don't know, the outside. The, the front and back panels being vinyl in the bottom. I don't know, the pumpkin tote I'm doing over there that I showed at the beginning, I'm gonna do vinyl on the bottom for that and see how it works. See, it's kind of fun to try and like work with different things. Maybe I'll put a zipper in that one too. Or like an inside, a zipper pocket on the inside would be fun. There's so many like, so much fun stuff you Right? Like I was telling my sister the other day, it's fun because like once you do a few of these different bag patterns from, you know, all the various sources we have and the YouTubers and whatnot, um, it kind of makes it fun because then you can, once you get used to doing the different, a few different techniques, then you can start adding them in. Okay. I fold it over once. Now I'm going to fold it over again. Then you can start adding those techniques into, um, other stuff like other bags and stuff you're doing right like that's what I did with the the mesh part the mesh pocket I've been I kind of got figured that out did it a few times got used to it and now it's like oh that's like a super easy thing to add in and then it kind of gives you an idea when you're trying out a new pattern you're like oh, I could do that on the back that'd be fun right this French seam thing you guys is so freaking cool it's just, I think it's so easy too. Okay. 
And that's the thing too. Then you could add in, once you start getting used to like French seams too, you could start adding those in to different bags if you want to do that instead of like, the, you know, the way the pattern says to do it. Okay, so now we have it clipped on both ends, right? Okay, by both straps. Okay, now let me make sure, I wanna check the tutorial one more time. I just wanna make sure, yep. Okay, you're gonna keep, when you do this, keep the straps out of the way. Okay, don't press the straps in. Okay, we're still keeping the straps loose. Okay, so I didn't, when I clipped it, I didn't clip the straps into the clips. See that? The straps are still just hanging. I guess you could tuck them in the pocket maybe. There you go. That's a good way to do it, right? Tuck them into each side. They stay put. Stay put straps. Don't get up in our business. We'll get you at the end. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck the lining in. This is where it gets crazy. We're gonna we're gonna tuck the lining in to the bag, okay? So, take your panel piece again, put it, the entire thing needs to be face down. Yes, face down. This is where I got confused the first time. Because it doesn't seem like it's correct, but it is correct, if that makes sense. Okay, so I had this fun like ABC fabric that I'm using, okay, for the lining, okay? So the lining, remember that was the piece that was 18 by 34, the really long one, okay? It should be now the same size as the piece that you um, have sewn together, the three panels, okay? So what you're gonna do is tuck the lining in. Now, we're gonna tuck them in, it's gonna, you're gonna lay it down wrong sides together, okay? So your bag is already, laying face down, okay? Now you're gonna take your lining of the bag and you're gonna lie it face up, okay? Because you want it to be wrong sides together. Does that make sense? Okay, what you're going to do to tuck the lining in is exactly that, just tuck it in, okay? You're going to Tuck this part up under, up under, okay? So you're gonna have to unfold it a little bit, okay? Not too much because you don't wanna lose the nice fold that you just worked so hard doing, right? But you're gonna just tuck it so that it lines up, right, there, okay? And then reattach. your clips, okay? So let's keep doing that. So I, when I did this, because I want to make sure the lining goes all the way up, right? You want it to be all the way up here to where that crease is. So I kind of just untucked a few of my clips at a time, and then you kind of check to make sure <laughs> Wanda's getting scolded for something. Uh oh. Wanda's in trouble with her dad right now. She's barking at him. He's yelling no at her. It's a scene. <laughs> she like, she, I swear that dog, she just barks like at nothing. Maybe she's seeing ghosts. Okay, so the last two. I'm going to just tuck them in. It looks like I cut my lining a little bit shorter than I should have, but that is okay. Work it out. Okay, so here's one side. Okay, see how it's tucked all the way up there? Let's see if I can unclip just this part and show you. See there? tucked all the way up to the top crease. Okay? All right. So, 
do that. You're going to do this to both sides. I'm going to switch back to the regular camera. You're going to do that to the other side. Just undo, make sure it's nice and flat when you're tucking it in. Okay, now have it all tucked in and let me show you. Okay, so here we are. Okay, there's the lining of our bag. Oh, I like this with the with the letters. It's fun. The outside of our bag. Okay. It's all tucked in nice and neat. Okay, and now we are going to take it and we need to make sure when we do this again that our straps are out of the way, okay? So they need, the straps need to be like, tuck them in the pocket, make sure they're faced to the, the bottom of the bag on the outside, okay? We don't wanna sew the, st the straps down, okay? So we're just going to stitch the top flaps in place. So we're just gonna stitch along here, okay? On both ends, okay? And just make sure those naughty straps stay out of our business. Huh? Okay, let's do this real quick. I don't know if it's better. It makes it slightly bug bulky if you tuck it into the pocket, but at least I know they're completely out of the way, right? Okay. And it's kind of just going to be like a end up being like a top stitch on the outside of the bag, but it's actually stitching the lining in the bag as well, right? So it kind of does like two things at once for us. Which is nice. So nice of it. At least, at least one good clip to go on the ride. fabric is so funny. I might keep this bag for myself. Make a different one for my kid. Okay, here we go. Here's the first one. Huh. I could have a straighter stitch, but you know, whatever. Okay, and then do the same thing to the other side, making sure that the strap is not in the way. So like, tuck it down before you start sewing. that you have some space to do this because it takes up <laughs> when the when the bag is this um, when you have all the pieces together it's kind of a large you, know, you can always fold it over but large area I keep knocking stuff off of my little sewing table here we have hopefully I got all my edges in there okay now we have this 
There's the inside of our bag. There's the outside of our bag. Cute, right? Now we're just gonna put it together, okay? So, we're going to fold the bag in half with the lining sides together, okay? Fold the bag in half. Now this is where it really seems like we're doing something wrong, but this is how you do French seams, okay? So, fold the bag in half, clip the sides. Okay, keep those strappies out of the way. Clip your sides down and make sure. I'm gonna be straight and then right lined up, right? So, clip these. All right, and then we're going to stitch. Mine's a little bit off. Yeah. Make sure maybe that the um, straps are mostly lined up, huh? Two. This one got a little bit. Can also, you can also press this. I had a clip in my mouth. You can also repress this if you need to. I swear, I wish I could get super duper good at cutting. I feel like I never cut anything straight. God, that drives me crazy. The lining, I was a little bit short on the lining. Like I was like at, I don't know, 17 and three quarter inches of the line, of how much lining I had. So it's a little bit, little bit off. Okay, and then stitch the, or stitch. Same thing with the other side, right? And then just line it up, clip it, and then we're going to stitch down both sides. Okay, at a quarter inch seam, okay? And you wanna make sure that you stitch over, back stitch over, so reverse, Okay, and stitch, reverse and stitch. So just so it's a little bit stronger on the, um, at the top of the bag, right? Okay, so here's what we have. Our bag's all clipped together, okay? We're just gonna take it and we're going to stitch down this side and we're gonna stitch down this side at a quarter inch seam. Now, when we stitch over the top, we're gonna stitch, back stitch, stitch. That's just an extra security to hold that together, okay? All right, let's do this. Okay, keep those straps kind of just, they're just trying to get in the way at this point. All right, quarter inch. Here we go. Now this is where it gets cool because it like, seems like we're doing this wrong. This is when do you ever stitch your seam, seam on the outside, right? That's why it's cool. That's so right. <laughs> quite all the way. It's going to be okay because you'll see in a minute. We're going to actually end up doing another stitch in addition to this quarter inch stitch. Did I actually do the back stitch at the top? I've talked about it a lot. Now I don't know if I did it. 
I'm going to do a little stitch one more time. If you forget to do a back stitch, you guys, I do this all the time. Well, I forget all the time. Then I have to go back just to be sure. Just to be sure, right? Okay. Now I know that I did it. Okay, you're going to do the same to the other side. This time, I'll be sure to do a back stitch. There we go. Okay, I did it. I remember doing it. It's kind of like locking the door when you go somewhere. <laughs> like, did I lock the door? Should I go back and check? I should probably go back and check. And the same thing. push through when I mess up. I used to just push through and keep going no matter what. Now I actually try to stop, go back, fix it. Not You don't have to keep going the whole time. Okay, so now we have our bag. Now it has raw edges right on the outside, but it's all stitched together. Okay? Fun, fun. Okay, so now we need to trim the raw edges, okay? And you'll see why we need to do this in a minute after we uh, do the French seam, okay? But we need to trim these down. Of course, don't cut into your seam, but trim it. So all of these extra hairs and this extra thick fabric is just a little bit trimmed up, okay? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get my heavy duty scissors here. Okay, and be careful not to actually snip your seam. You just want to go kind of close. To the edge. Now let's go to camera four again. Okay, so I'm just kind of trimming out. edges see and all of those extra like threads that get hanging out and whatnot okay and trim the other side See what I mean? It gets, you gotta, gotta kind of go slow with the canvas because it's, especially when it's over like several folded pieces. Last thing you want to do is actually clip your seam or clip into your bag. Oh my gosh, what a disaster would that be? Okay, so now you can see I just trimmed up the seams. Okay, take your bag, turn it inside out. Take it, turn the whole thing inside out, poke out the corners, huh. it looks like I didn't catch some of, okay, so here's a mistake that I made, I didn't catch some of the fabric in the seam I did on the outside, so what I'm going to do is redo the seam. Just, I'm gonna just stitch a little bit closer in, okay? But you wanna do it now, right? Because if you do it later, you know, it's not ever gonna, it's not gonna be a full French seam on the inside. So make sure when you, when you um, turn it, that all of the seams, it got all of the seams. This is probably because, I remember I said that my 
inside fabric was a like a quarter inch or so um, uh, shorter than I needed it. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. I'm just going to do another, and it shouldn't be a big deal. I mean, whatever. It's just going to make the bag a little thinner, like a half inch overall thinner. Not a big deal. And I'll just probably trim this down again then. <clears throat> but it shouldn't mess with, there shouldn't be any other issue because it, um, it's all put together otherwise, right? So this is just going to end up making the bag skinnier by a half inch, which is totally fine. No one's going to know in the long run. Okay, I'm actually going to do it to the other side too because I saw a little teeny tiny like spot that didn't get enclosed. And then we're going to trim it again. But this time before I trim, I'm going to make sure that everything is enclosed. Let's make sure first before we trim. Yeah. Okay, so now looks like get everything over on this one. Ah, it still has a little bit that it didn't get. Oh man, I must have been shorter than <laughs> I must have been like a good half inch right there. There's just a little tiny piece that I'm going to enclose. Let's do it. I'm not even going to sit down. See what I'm talking about here? It's just this little, oh, I guess you can't see. Yeah, you can. There's like a little tiny piece that doesn't want to, and it's, it's strictly, it's it's because it wasn't, it's because I used a piece that wasn't quite long enough and I thought I could get away with it and I didn't pay attention enough. Okay. We'll get it in there. But I mean, technically, this is easier than having a bag that... where you turn the lining the right way and then you have to birth it. If you found out after you birthed it that it wasn't long enough, that would be annoying. This way. Okay, now it's all enclosed. So. So cute. Okay, so I'm going to trim these up one more time real quick. We're going to then turn it inside out. Okay. And then we're going to sew at a half inch. Ooh. I wonder if my... These scissors used to work great on thick. I'm wondering if these gingers would be better now. Laundry. Maybe. Maybe I just need to get my scissors sharpened. My scissors have had enough. When you're trimming these edges, do it slowly, you guys. The last thing you want to do is cut into your seam. And you'll be doing exactly what I was doing, and your bag will be getting a little smaller and a little smaller. 
as you stitch it. Okay, so turn it inside out. Okay, and you're gonna go ahead, make sure you poke your corners out. Okay, okay it's cutie patootie on the inside too, right? Okay, poke your corners out. You can lay your straps can just be laying out like this. Okay, now you're going to clip it down the side again. So, make sure that you kind of like finger press it and you'll be able to feel like that to make sure that you have the seam and have it all the way as far as it can go, um, as far as it can fold out here to the outside. Okay. I'm gonna just finger press it, help it along, and then start clipping. And we're just essentially doing exactly what we did on the outside to the inside. Okay. We're sewing down both sides down both sides of the bag, okay? But this time, instead of a quarter inch seam, we are using a half inch seam, okay? So you're just gonna sew one side, all the way down at a half inch seam this time, okay? Okay, what this is going to do is we are enclosing that outside seam, okay? So remember that outside raw edge that we had? We're enclosing it. That's the step, okay? So make sure, again, just finger press it out, kind of feel along to make sure that you have the seam. Clip it. Now we're gonna take it and we're just gonna sew down the sides. And then we'll, that, that's pretty much our French seam, you guys. Okay? All right, so half inch this time. I really need to get this little guy off of here because he's driving me crazy, this little sticker thing. He doesn't want to come off now. I need little sticker things like this that are like, easily removable. Now it gunked up my whole top of the... Okay, so we're going to do a half inch in. Okay. just you seam the outside and you seam the inside and that's it. I couldn't believe how easy it was the first time I did it because it was like, what? I thought it was going to be this big complicated thing that was scary. Nope, not at all. go through right there at the edge. Okay. There 
here's one side. French seam. Hopefully I got it all in there. And then here's, let's do the other side. You know what, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start from here, let's see. Well, it's so bulky. I'm gonna start from the bottom again. <coughs> It might just have an easier time starting if I start from here because it's just cotton woven at the bottom and interfacing. Okay. extra threads and doodads on the inside okay just trim it trim all your extra threads now if you don't want to do box corners if you just wanted to do like a tote that lays flat just fine too it's all preference then you're done okay then all you do I'll show you what it looks like you just turn the bag right side out, okay, okay, and voila, oh, there's a little extra, my little extra threads at the bottom there which won't matter because I'm going to box this tote. I like a boxy bottom. I'm going to box it. But if you don't want to do a boxy bottom, okay, you can just leave it like this and it could be a tote that lays kind of flat. I know. It does make totes so much easier, doesn't it, Sam Samantha? Okay, if you do want to do a boxy bottom tote, we are going to turn it so you have it you're still going to have it um turned right side out okay and i'm gonna put this anyway okay lay it down flat in front of you okay make sure the corners are all poked to the bottom okay and you're going to measure a two and a half inch uh, a square at the bottom of the bag. Okay. I mean, if you don't want it to be that big of a box at the bottom, you don't have to. But I'm going to do a two and a half inch square. I'm just choosing. Okay, so I'm just going to measure here. Two and a half inches in. Two and a half inches up. And then if I can see it, I will make a box. There's one. Okay, do the same thing to the other side. Two and a half inches in, two and a half inches up. I know it's learning how to do like the French seam situation. I was so glad I learned it, Samantha, from the um, uh, for the market tote that I made 
for our swap in June, it was so much easier. Okay, so once you have those squares measured, okay, you're going to cut. And I know that sounds crazy, okay? But you can kind of see right here, I have a square right here. I'm gonna cut that square out. And then this side, I'm gonna cut this square out, okay? We only have a few. And I know it seems I hate this. This part is nerve wracking for me because I always feel like I might be ruining the bag because <laughs> I'm cutting a hole in it right now. But it's going to look cool when the bottom is boxed. Okay, there's one square. Other square. Gotta have really sharp scissors to go over those, all those French seams. Okay. And you are going to take, now you need your clips again. Okay, so looks like this right now okay you got two boxes cut off the bo cut out of the bottom of your bag okay you're going to open the corners out and match up the squared edges okay so you're going to I'll show you how to do it on the screen I can't I can't show you just with one hand unfortunately <laughs> whoops sorry you guys Okay, so your box looks like this, okay? You're going to take these corners down here, okay? Pull them, okay? And match up the seams in the middle. Does that make sense? Okay, so match up the seams as best you can. See, I don't look them. Okay, and then I usually I clip the seam first just because then I'm sure I know where it is. But then I also clip the edges too. Okay, and then we're gonna end up, and if it doesn't, you guys, I don't think I've ever had a corner match up absolutely perfectly, it's fine. Don't worry about it, okay? And then you have it clipped like that, okay? I'm gonna do the other side too. Okay, so pull, kind of take the, let's see if I can show it to you. Got your box, go grab the, right here, okay, the inside corner that you cut on both sides and pull it so it's straight match the seams. Box corners used to be as confusing as zippers to me. It was like the first time, the first time I read instructions on how to do box corners, I was like, I just sat there and looked at it. I like could, I could not figure it out. And now it's gotten easier after doing it again and again. Okay, so now we're just gonna go to the machine and we're gonna stitch a quarter inch right here. Okay. Essentially, right now we're boxing the inside of the bag, right? But and then we have to make sure that we do the French seam part to it. So we don't end up with raw box corners on the outside, right? So it's just like an extra step, basically, if we're gonna be doing the French seam. Okay, there's one side is boxed. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Let's go this way.
the quarter inch seam on the other side too. except there's raw edges. So we're gonna do like we did before, kind of trim these raw edges up. Those extra threads and whatnot. Ooh, carefully, we're gonna do it. Don't cut yourself or the bag. Okay. So we trimmed it up, okay? I'm gonna take it one more time, fold it inside out. Okay, now we're going to, see it looks like a lovely, <laughs> it's a lovely box bag now, okay? We are going to stitch one more time. Okay, so I would clip it in place to make sure that you have all of the seams. Okay, so clip the bottom, poke your corners out. Make sure those are poked out nice. Okay, and you're going to clip along the bottom where we just stitched the box stitch. Okay. And we are doing exactly like we did when we stitched the French seam down the sides exact same thing okay we need to give this a half inch stitch okay and we're just basically stitching and closing the seam in the boxed corner in on the outside easy peasy right and then we're gonna be done Okay, so I have this clipped along the bottom, half inch seam, both sides. Just be careful when you go over that other fridge seam that you kind of might have to like Sometimes I have to lift up my foot to like help it through because it's got kind of a lot of folded fabric it's dealing with now, right? See how it's kind of like, oh, sorry, I didn't realize you guys weren't on the thing. So when it's going over, when your machine's trying to go over that act, that other seam that we, the French seam that we stitched down, just, you might have to like lift your foot to like help it through a little bit. It was kind of bunching for me a little bit, but it's okay now. Okay, and we're gonna do the same on the other side, and then we will be done. Done, done, done. This is an old caddy wall, but I just want to do it. Okay, here we are. Okay, here we go, guys. Are you excited to see the finished product? I'm excited for it. Okay, I'm about to go over that seam, so I'm going to go a little, clo a little slower. There we go. We're good. We got it. Alright you guys, there is, let me clip these little strings that we just sewed. 
This is super cute, you guys. Such a perfect little like book bag or travel bag even. Like if you wanted to take it travel like on a trip with your kiddos, put a zipper in the top. It's an easy just throw over your shoulder, throw a bunch of stuff in it. And it's sturdy too, right? And those seams, I feel like the French seams make it a little bit sturdier than a normal bag. Because it's stitched, it's like double enclosed, you know? Okay. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Not my box bottom. Here we are. What do we think? Okay, here's those French seams on the bottom. It's all enclosed. Oh, I'm so glad we added the rickrack to the outside. I think it's so much cuter. And it almost seems like it's a reversible bag because on the inside, it's all enclosed too, right? There's no like raw edges on the inside. There's no raw edges on the outside. It's perfect. And it's nice and big. So I could fit like, I bet I could fit my binders in here. What do you think? It's cute, right? I think it's super cute. Okay, and there's our little mesh pocket. Super fun, I think. There's so many different ways you could do this too. I'm gonna try it today with the uh, faux leather, the vinyl, um, and the pumpkin. I'm gonna try it with I'm gonna do this one next, um, and then, but I'm gonna do it slightly different because that's gonna be the bottom and that's fun. I might try a few more of these. This may actually be, I may be giving these totes with some books and then I might even make like a few little of these guys to put in it, right? Like to hook, hook onto the side with like a gift card or something. Oh my gosh, how cute would that be for teachers? Or any kind of like little gift that you wanted to give somebody. I wonder if you could hook. I wonder if you could hook this like to, you know? I think you can. You could put like a little tab. You could easily enclose like a little um, purse hook tab on the inside of this too. So it doesn't hook to the outside, right? Oh, it'd be so cute. Isn't that fun? Ah! Do you like it, Ashley? It's fun, huh? And it was pretty, I know it was a little, it was a little bumpy, but overall it's pretty easy. So this is the only, the second one I made. Um, it's pretty quick. And now I would like to, um, my daughter has a birthday party coming up this weekend for a little girlfriend. Um, I think what I'd like to try is making this slightly smaller, right? Because this might be a little bit big on like a seven-year-old. But we could make it a little smaller. It could still fit like her books and like some crafts and stuff in it. And it would be really cute, right? Put like a princess panel or something on the front. They're all like my friend, my daughter and her girls are into the princesses right now. All right, so that's our bag for the day. Thanks for joining me on the first Sunday social. I think what I'm gonna do is we will do the pattern that comes with the Fabric Club uh, shipment, okay? We'll do it each month, but we'll do it the last Sunday of the month at 10 a.m. What do we think? Okay, I tried to do it, I tried to schedule it for Saturday evening at um, it was just way too hot my garage gets so hot in the middle of the day and then it doesn't cool off until like 8 o'clock at night our time so I think Sunday morning might work better but that's what I'm thinking I think the next one would be then August would be Sunday August I think 29th if that's right okay and for that one we'll be doing the pattern that comes with the August shipment 
And you can join us if you don't, if you didn't get the August shipment, but it's kind of extra fun if you're using what, where we, what we have from the shipment, right? All right. So that's it. If you've missed, um, if any of your friends have missed this um, live today, it's going to be on my website um, under past videos. So you can come back and watch it again. All right. Thanks for joining you guys. Happy Sunday.